Now let's begin this edition by informing you that pursuant to the Constitution of the Republic of Rwanda of 2003, revised in 2015, especially in its Article 116, His Excellency the President has appointed the following cabinet member. Dr. Emmanuel Udia Shebuja, Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Now signed by the Prime Minister of Rwanda on behalf of His Excellency the President of the Republic of Rwanda, Paul Kagame. Now the following is a brief uh, bio of the newly appointed minister. Udjira Shebuja has a lot of experience in law, ranging from being an international judge, scholar, practitioner and consultant in environmental law. The 44-year-old is the former president of the East African Court of Justice. He is a dean emeritus of the University of Rwanda Faculty of Law. The father of two, a son and daughter, has also given lectures in both local and international universities on diverse subjects of environmental law and international law to various well-renowned universities. Dr. Ujira Shebuja established himself as an expert and arbitrator in both national and international arbitrations after securing membership of the governing body of the International Association of Law Schools. The Chief Justice of Rwanda, Dr. Foste Nezidiayo, has urged judges in the country to familiarize themselves with the laws governing the East African community and the way the East, Africa the East African sorry, Court of Justice functions. Judges from Rwanda and other countries in the EAC have been receiving training on the functions of the East African Court of Justice and note on the significance of such training. It is important that judges understand how that court functions, not forgetting that the judges in the court itself are selected from the member countries of the bloc, so it is important that they familiarize themselves with the laws if they are to serve in such a court. Because all courts have jurisdictions, be it those here and that one, it is important for judges to be familiar with the different jurisdictions, lest they make rulings that they have no legal power over. Indeed, judges at the East African Court of Justice say they have noticed that there is need for such training in the EAC member states. We get cases coming from Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania, Uganda and other member states and they come to us indicating that the laws of those respective countries were not respected, which means there is no way the laws governing the bloc were respected. That is why we decided that judges must be trained on the laws governing the community, enabling them to make rulings that respect such laws and the EAC's human rights requirements. Justice officials here in Rwanda commend the level of cooperation that exists between the country and the East African Court of Justice. Those laws are respected here in Rwanda as well, and sometimes we get cases that require a review of the treaties that EAC member states sign and other relevant laws, and it might be decided that the case needs to be referred to the East African Court of Justice. They must therefore know the procedures for such things so that we can support the EAC and promote regional trade. Also, Rwandans in general need to understand that Rwandan courts can make rulings on such matters, and so can the East African Court of Justice when necessary. Those who participated in the training are from Rwanda's Appeals Court, High Court and the Commercial High Court. Now, the Rwanda Investigation Bureau is urging the youth to stop using illegal drugs as this is currently the, domin the dominating crime among other crimes. Emmanuel Sindai Gaya used to consume various illegal drugs, mostly cannabis. When a person is taking cannabis, they feel like they are on top of the world, like there's music in your head, and a person can no longer think straight. It got to a point that I would walk in the middle of a road while cars were passing by because I felt invincible. Due to the excess consumption of these illegal drugs, he got sick for three months. As he was admitted at a hospital, he was later taken to the Iwawa Rehabilitation Center, where he is currently the head of a corporation called Urkundo, the dust sewing. He went on to advise those that are still using drugs. 
My warning to the youth is that cannabis destroys a person's future. So my advice to young people that are using it is to stop and start treating it like an enemy and avoid it at all costs. Nothing good comes out of it. The increase in drug use, especially cannabis, is said to be due to a variety of factors. I see people using illegal drugs and I tell them to stop because they damage the brain. It is a result of three factors. First, the family that a child is born in, that is not hands-on when it comes to taking care of him or her. Hence, he or she ends up using them. Secondly, you may find that unfortunately a child grows up as an orphan on the street. And thirdly, a child could fall in both categories with an addition of an influence from a bad peer group that usually uses illegal drugs. Dr. Arthur Rukundo, a psychiatrist and a doctor at the Karies Ndera Hospital, says that day by day, the number of people with drug addiction is increasing. He also noted that behavior change is one of the symptoms that people can look out for in a drug addict and help him or her early on. At an early stage, there's a change in a person's behavior. He or she may start becoming rude towards their parents, and they no longer listen to anything that they are told. As the individual continues to use illegal drugs like cannabis, they might find themselves experiencing mental problems. Hence, if they are in school, they start failing, or if they are working, they can no longer perform. The Rwanda Investigation Bureau says the youth are the most involved in these crimes. The spokesperson of RIB, Dr. Murangira Thierry, urges parents and the youth to work together to fight these crimes because the penalties for these crimes are heavy. RIB, RIB will not tolerate anyone selling cannabis, cultivating it or giving it to people and that applies to all illegal drugs because now the surveillance measures we have have intensified in collaboration with other agencies. So we urge the youth, because they are the most involved in such activities, to stop. The punishment for such crimes is quite heavy. If you are arrested for drug trafficking, the punishment is life in prison. In the past two years, 12,492 people have been prosecuted for illegal drug use and distribution, of which 10,739 are males and 1,753 are females, according to RIB. Of those arrested by RIB, those between the ages of 18 and 30 are 6,793, while those over 30 years are 5,344, which means that the average age for drug suspects is the youth, which accounts for 57%. RIB says that in the last two years, it has seized over four tons of cannabis, 26 Kanyanga liters, and five pounds of heroin. Angolans in Rwanda have celebrated their country's Day of the National Hero, commemorating Dr. Antonio Agostino Neto, who found who fought for the country's independence and became the first president. Gabi Mouvigny reports. The Embassy of the Republic of Angola in Kigali on September 17, 2021, held a ceremony to commemorate Dr. Antonio Augustin Neto as he is considered a hero who fought for their independence. The Angolan ambassador to Rwanda agrees that Dr. Antonio Augustin Neto is indeed the greatest hero. The impact that Dr. Antonio Agostinho Neto left to the Angolan nation, I believe it cannot be measured. It's a very huge impact. He basically led uh, 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 the nation to a place whereby all this time uh, the country was basically fighting against the colonial uh, regime. So that era was very important uh, and, and what he did as well to our nation, it was something that cannot be measured. He was able to fight against all, all uh, 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 colonial regime. Even though the nation was under fire, he was strong enough to be able to fight against all those challenges and accomplish everything that he believed in. So the country was basically being invaded in different sides, south, north, uh, south, by uh, apartheid regime. And even though because of all those invasions, uh, the leader, Dr. Antonio Agustineto, was able to fight and put Angola where he is right now. 
Some of the Angolans living in Rwanda believe that he left a remarkable legacy behind. Shinetu was a great leader. We can see that he left a huge gap in our country. He was also worried about women's education in our country. Uh, he worried about children's education as well. So it's, it's, it's a day that is very, very important for Angolan and Angolans. I believe we can go beyond, as we can see. Now we're here. It's also, uh, I can believe it's something that uh, Dr. Antonio Agostinho Neto had in his, in, his, uh, in his mind and his dreams. He's having a peaceful Angola and then spread across, uh, across whole Africa. Throughout his history, we're able to see that uh, Antonio Agostinho Neto had a lot of partnership with different Africanists. So it's something that he believed. So uh, for me, as a young generation, we have to keep it pushing. Dr. Antonio Augustine Neto became the first president of Angola on 11th February 1975 when the country gained its independence. He served in this capacity until his death on September 10, 1979. Gabi Movuni, reporting for RTV News. Gabi, for that report. Now, Rwanda Senate President Dr. Auguste Iamuremye has pointed out that the COVID-19 pandemic cannot be an excuse not to respect democracy because Rwanda has proven that it can still be respected under such circumstances. Now, the Senate President made the observations as Rwanda marked the International Day of Democracy. Take a look. As part of the events organized to mark the day, virtual discussions were convened, bringing together parliamentarians and officials from other institutions As we mark the International Day of Democracy, Rwanda and indeed the entire globe have continued to battle the COVID-19 pandemic. The scourge has had a negative impact on the lives of people and the economies of countries. It is therefore only right that on a day like this it be reminded that the principles of democracy must be respected even during difficult times. We commend the fact that even during the COVID-19 pandemic, Rwanda continued to respect the principles of democracy as noted by different reports. The Rwanda Governance Board has noted that the country decided to put the welfare of the people ahead of all else when the pandemic was at its worst, with the most vulnerable to the virus being the first to be vaccinated. It is important that we as inmates have been among the first to get vaccinated, despite our criminal past, and yet not many people on the African continent have got this opportunity. Not many countries have them. It means that the government values its people, even those in prison. This proves that the government thinks about us. Listen, I have lived for many years and seen many good things, but this is beyond measure. The fact that they have thought of the youth has really touched me, showing that the government thinks about young people as the strength of the country. The COVID-19 pandemic has killed more than 1,100 people in the country since it was first detected back in March 2020, and it would have been much worse had the government not done what it did when it did. When the country went into total lockdown, it was to protect people's health and lives. When food distribution initiatives were organized during the lockdown to help the most vulnerable in the society, the people's well-being was being given a priority. And that was also the case when an economy recovery fund was set up as well. And such action to give priority to the needs of people is democracy. The behavior of the general public during this pandemic has also been an indication of the relationship between the people and their government. Looking at God's entire planet, Wandans showed the best behavior when it comes to respecting the decisions made by their leaders, though it required sensitization efforts as opposed to excessive force in the form of tear gas and bullets, as you saw being done in other parts of the world. As for those caught breaking the preventive measures, 10,000 people out of a population of more than 13 million is a very small number, and it shows that the people respect their leadership because they love and respect their leaders and know that what is being done is for their benefit. The discussions on democracy took place alongside others on decentralization as Rwanda marked the International Day of Democracy that is usually observed on the 15th of September. 
Ladies and gentlemen, as you can tell, I have with me my guest, Anka Uineza Anderson. <laughs> Please introduce yourself for people who don't know you so far. Yes, my name is Uineza Anderson, and I am a singer songwriter. I've also done theater. Mostly, I am in the performing arts. Wow. So how did the music career come to mind? Like, how do you sit down and think about it and be like, hmm, I can be an artist? Well, it's a bit tricky because yeah. I've always loved to sing ever since I was a kid. Anything related to the arts, I was wow. in it. But then I always wanted to write about something, mm -hmm. things that are meaningful, things that matter to me. Mm -hmm. So I just kept searching and I was lucky to come across different people, producers, and I just couldn't stop. That's how I started writing Sins, which is the new song that I have that is out. Yeah. And I have four others now. I have four songs out now. Wow, like they're out on YouTube, yep. yeah? Yep, So, four So songs. let's basically talk about Sins, like the lyrics, what is it about really, you know? Yes, the song is about, there was a child that was raped mm -hmm. and I saw it on Twitter. I couldn't watch because mm. they had pictures on and I was so angry, I just, I didn't know what to do about it. Mm -hmm. And I met the producer who's called Dizo Last. He had mm -hmm. a, something prepared and I was just like, Phew. it just, I didn't mm -hmm. even have to write. It just poured out. Wow. Well, there you have it on behalf of the entire news production team and my colleague today, Anderson. Thank you very much for <laughs> coming here. Um, so that's it for today. Um, thank you very much. I'm Jane Mutoni. Anderson. The guest. Uineza. Uineza. Yes. <laughs> Good night.